As the young people are being dismissed, let's take our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. That guided by faith, what's the end of that journey? Heaven, right? Just wonderful thought in that course. 
when the battle's over. But it is a battle in the meantime, so Hebrews 12, you're in Hebrews 11, Hebrews 12 encouraged us to run with patience, put aside those weights, the sin which thus soothing says, run with patience, the race that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus, and then here's the phrase, the author and finisher of our faith. And remember, what we're doing is we're, we're contrasting our faith with their faith. Hebrews 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also can pass about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What was their faith that gave them victory? And so our faith is encouraged by reminding ourselves of the faith of those that went before us. So we've jumped into this study of the Hall of Faith, often referred to as the Hall of Faith, and, and we're looking at these different people, and we're, we're growing in our faith through their example and their circumstances. Guided by faith this morning, Hebrews 11, verses 23 through 28, the same principle of faith is the victory, right? That overcomes the world. Faith gives us, chapter 11, verse 1, substance and evidence. When things are difficult, when the way is unclear, faith is the substance of things over the evidence of things not seen. So it's the same principle. We're just seeing how it applies, how it was worked out in Amram and Jochebed. Those are the names of Moses' parents. And how faith was worked out in Moses' life. Faith gives us direction. That's the thought this morning. Faith gives us direction as we keep our eyes on Jesus. Moses' parents did what was right. Verse 23. By faith they hid. Moses was hid. So when he was born, he was hid. So that's Moses' parents. Moses didn't have anything to do with it. So we're talking about Moses' parents. First of all, they did what was right as they walked by faith, overcame a wicked king, right? And his desire to kill the babies. Moses then, verses 24 through 27, himself did what was right as he walked by faith. He overcame, what is it, verses 25 and 26? Uh, the offerings of the world. And chose rather the things of God. And that's amazing. That's guided by faith. That's wonderful right there. So verses 24 through 27 overcame a wicked nation and, and its enticements. The lure of the world by faith. And then verse 28 to bring it together this morning. Moses and the children of Israel kept the Passover. The very first time they ever told to do this. Kill a lamb and put its blood on the doorpost. That's how you'll be rescued from judgment. And they did it. They overcame God's judgment because, verse 28, through faith, he kept the Passover. So let's allow faith to lead us in victory in our evil day. See, these are the same thoughts. It's just how does it look? What are, the, what are some of the lessons we learned from these other heroes of faith? Let's keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, so we can obtain a good report, right? So number one, hiding. By faith. Guided by faith, number one in verse 23, Moses' his parents hiding by faith. So verse 23 says of Hebrew 11, Hebrews 11, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid. So it was a, a, a thing done to Moses. It wasn't something Moses did, it was something done to him. He was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Two things are listed specifically about the faith of Moses' his parents in verse 23. He was a, they saw that he was a proper child. Very interesting. And number two, they were not afraid of the king's commandment. What was the king's commandment? We're not going to go back there, but in Exodus chapter 1 and 2, Pharaoh commands all the baby boys born to the Israelites to be killed. He was afraid. A new Pharaoh rose who did not know Moses. He was afraid of the Israelites gaining in strength. So one way to keep the numbers down is to have all the boys killed. Therefore, they can't get married. Their, their children are going to not be around, so they're going to get smaller. It didn't work, by the way. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, so let's say Moses is born about this time. He's 80 when he comes back. So just 80 years later, most people estimate one and a half to two million people, Israelites, come out of Egypt. I don't think it worked. But he tried. Pharaoh tried to kill all the baby boys. He told the midwives, first of all, to kill the boys that were born. The midwives obeyed God and not Pharaoh. And by the way, God blessed them for their faith. We're not talking about them this morning, but they, they showed great faith and did what God said and not what Pharaoh said. But then Pharaoh, Exodus chapter 1, told all of his people, and this was interesting, 
all of his people are told to throw the baby boys into the Nile River when they're born. So the midwives weren't killing them. So now he tells all the people, if you find a Hebrew boy, throw it in the river. So there's a lot of pressure, isn't there? A lot of uh, danger. So when Amram and Jochebed, we find out later, Moses' genealogy, that's the name of his parents. When Amram, the father, and Jochebed, the wife, had Moses, they were in trouble. Aaron and, you may know their names, Aaron and Miriam, Moses' sister and brother, were already born. And it doesn't seem like the edict was in place at that point. But now it was. Amram and Jochebed have a baby boy. They're in trouble. But God tells us that they acted in faith. Two reasons they acted in faith. Number one, because letter A, they, they recognize God's plan. Verse 23 again, it says, because. So what's the because there for? By faith. Because they saw he was a proper child. Now, a proper child. Does that mean that because Moses was a beautiful baby, they were going to keep him alive and not kill him? Is that what it means? Every mom thinks their baby's beautiful. That is not what this means. They recognized something special about this child. So here's how my mind worked as I was studying this. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron and Miriam were already born, and the edict wasn't in place. Now all of a sudden the edict's in place, and Amram and Jochebed have another boy. In my mind, they're probably thinking, wait a minute. What's God doing? You hear me? You follow up? What's God doing? Why do we have a boy now? Maybe they thought, well, that's fine. We already got two kids. Let's just go on. And we're... Now they have another baby boy. And, and I'm not there. I wasn't there. I can't talk to Amram and Jochebed. You know? But my mind was... Maybe they're trying to figure out what is God doing. The edict is in place. The boys are going to be killed, and we have a boy. What is going on? I believe that they, from what we that he was a proper child. They saw God's hand in the birth of Moses. They clearly did not know all that God would do through Moses, but the Bible indicates that they saw something special in his birth. Therefore, because they trusted God, they were led to see that God would be at work in this situation and they would hide the baby. They saw God's hand, not the threat of the king. So Moses' parents hid Moses and did what was right because they were walking with God by faith. They saw God at work. One commentator said God actually came to Amram and Jochebed and said, I'm going to do something special with this boy. I don't, that's not written in the Bible. I don't know if that's true or not. But his comment was, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Amram and Jochebed knew something that God was doing with his child. Therefore, they acted by faith and said, we will do our part to let God use us to protect this baby. I'm not going to argue with that. That very well could have been what happened. But that God came to them and said, this baby's mine. I will take care of it. Moses' parents responded in faith to the edict of killing the baby boys and hid Moses. They hid him because they said, we're going to trust God. Does faith lead us to see God's plan unfolding in our lives? Does faith lead us to see God's plan unfold? We can't figure everything out. I don't know what's going on. This is difficult, whatever. Does faith lead us to see God's work being done in the midst of difficulty and difficult and trying circumstances. So number one, Moses was hid because his parents had faith in God's plan. That God's in charge. God's going to work this out. God has a plan. God knows what he's doing. He was a proper child. We don't know everything, but we know that God is at work in this situation. So let's keep our eyes on God. He's at work in every situation. Right? Number two, let it be. Why, why else did they hide Moses? By faith because they saw his proper child. Something... God was doing something with this child. But number two, because they saw God's power. In the last part of verse 23. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. So secondly, Moses' parents did not fear the king. By the way, he was one of the most powerful men in the world at the time. They knew that God was bigger than Pharaoh. Their faith, you get this right? Their faith was that God was bigger, big enough to help them as they did what was right. No matter what the king of Egypt said. They hid Moses for three months. He was hid 
uh, three months. By faith, they saw God as greater than Pharaoh. Now, take this another step further as we think of the account in Exodus. Then, Jochebed puts Moses in a basket pitched with tar and places him in the Nile River by faith. So just keep thinking that they, they didn't fear the wrath of the king. We don't know what's going to happen to this baby. And guess who finds him? Pharaoh's daughter, which could have been one of the worst things that could have ever happened, right? And yet she is touched by the tears. Moses is crying. It's uncomfortable. He's hungry. He doesn't know where he's at. And God, through all of this, brings Moses back to Jochebed. She raises him and weans him and then sends him to the, to the palace to live with Mo Pharaoh's daughter. Moses' parents knew what the king said, but they were living by faith. They trusted God as greater, and they did what was right because they didn't fear. Verse 23, they were not afraid of the king's command. They knew that God would take care of Moses, and God did. Faith led to victory as Moses would become God's deliverer for Israel. So let's put it together here. Number one this morning, hiding by faith. Just, okay, God, we don't know what's going on, but I know you have a plan. So I'm going to trust you and do what's right. I'm going to follow you in the midst of this difficulty. And I know that you're big enough. I know that you're big enough to carry out your will, no matter what it looks like around. Moses being put in a river in a basket, Moses being hit for three months, the king trying to have the baby boys killed, it all was trusting God, God's plan and God's power. That's how we will live by faith. That's how we will overcome by faith. Guided by faith is we trust God's plan and God's power, hiding by faith. Number two, choosing by faith. So now we come to Moses. Verse 23 says, by faith, Moses. But it really wasn't him we were talking about in verse 23. Now we come to Moses, verses 24 through 26. Fast forward, and now Moses is old enough to make his own decisions. Look at verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years. So just a point, real quick here. Next Sunday is Father's Day. And maybe, I don't know, we'll see. We'll say a little bit more about this in the evening. I'm not sure yet. But just the point right now, because Father's Day is on my mind, Moses had to live out his own faith. Mm -hmm. Moses' parents showed faith, but now it's Moses' turn. Can we, can we see how the kids have to make the faith their own? Can we, can, we, can we see that Moses couldn't ride the coattails of his mom and dad? He had to say, I have to make a choice. I have to do what you I have to have faith. So that's like a Father's Day message here before Father's Day. Does Moses believe God? His parents had faith. But he must live it out. Is God the center of Moses' life? With all that's going on, remember Egypt, the king, and the command to kill the babies. Now we have Moses in the palace with all of the power and wealth of Egypt. Is God the center of Moses' life? With all that's going on around him, will Moses follow God and live by faith in God? Well, I, some of you are probably familiar with this, but... He does. Moses chooses God over Egypt. There are two words that stand out in verses 24 through 26. And here's the first one on the screen. Affliction. Keep reading verse 24. When he was coming to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You keep reading verse 26. We'll get to it. it, it the main point, but here's the other thought, esteeming the reproach of Christ. Reproach. Affliction, reproach. So that first word, affliction. Moses, in verse 24, refuses to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You realize, don't you, that that title held great power and prestige? Most people assume Moses would have been the next ruler in Egypt. That's what most people assume. We don't know that. But he certainly had a lot held out to him. Well, probably none of us, I don't know, I could say that and some of you will, I don't know. None of us will probably ever have the opportunities and the, and the amount of, of worldly stuff placed in front of us like Moses had. Probably, probably none of us will. Maybe some of you will. And you'll have faith and say God's bigger. And that's, that's what you, we all should do. Moses had to make that choice. The man grew up in, uh, in the family of Pharaoh, the daughter, the grandson of the, of the Pharaoh, 
Hello, hello. And, and so the Bible says in verse 25 that he chooses to suffer affliction with the people of God. Rather, you see that there, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know, it, you know this, you know this. It is only by faith that we make that choice. Because other than faith, we're going, wow. I mean, that's pretty good. I can have it all and, and my life would be perfect. By faith, Moses rather suffering affliction than enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses chose to align with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin that all of Egypt had to offer. And it was all, we're not making, you know, we're not playing games, but it was all right there for, it was his. It's not mine, it was his. And Moses chose God over the world. The pleasures of sin were right in front of Moses. I don't, I don't know if we, we can underestimate that. The pleasures. I mean, it was. I mean, it was all his to enjoy, without anybody questioning him. But by faith, verse twenty-six. By faith, he chose reproach, esteeming Christ greater. So that, that brings us to our second word. So these two words that help us see Moses' faith, affliction. How? How? Who would do something like that? Give up all those things that were look so good, and yet, and choose to suffer affliction and sorrow and loss. But we come to this second word, and that's a reward. You remember in verse 26, he saw, or verse 25, he saw the pleasures of sin for what? A season? I mean, seriously, that's, we got to keep that in mind because Moses, by faith, saw this was not going to last. And it didn't. Where is Egypt? Well, Egypt is still on the map. I mean, where is all the, where are we? I mean, it's all gone. There, nothing in this world lasts. 1 John chapter 2, which was our scripture reading this morning. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, all the things of the world will be gone, done away. It will pass away. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So here's Moses by faith. What does it say in verse 27? Five, or 6, I'm sorry, 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasure, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He saw the passing pleasure of sin, never lasts, doesn't satisfy, but he saw God give what matters. He saw Christ. And that's amazing, too, in the Old Testament. He knew the faith of his parents. His own faith was in the coming Messiah, the Savior, the, 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 the one that God promised would be their Lord. Moses said, that's who my faith is in. Because Moses saw that God gives what matters, he was able to choose Jesus over the world. God gives truth and life and joy that will not pass away. By the way, the pleasures of sin are for a season. What does 1 John 2 tell us? He that doeth the will of God abideth what? Forever. So the reward is eternal. The pleasures of sin are for a season. Faith led Moses to choose difficulty with Israel rather than the world's promise of pleasure because he saw, verse 26, the reward. Had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He knew that God would, would do his work. He knew that God would, would bless. In the end, faith guides us because we see the reward. Faith leads us through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Faith leads us through all the love of the world. Faith guides us because we see the reward. And yes, there will be affliction. Jesus told us that it's not going to be like, oh, I don't want the world, I'm going to have Jesus and everything will be fine. There's going to be affliction. Moses suffered affliction with the people of God. It's, it's, that's why we need to have faith because the difficulties are leading to a reward. So Moses saw the truth and it all came through faith, right? Verse 24, by faith. When he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather suffer affliction, because he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches, he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. How will you and I esteem the things of God better than the world? By faith. Right? That's that substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that we've got to have our eyes fixed on God, and by faith we'll esteem Jesus better than anything the world can give. So think real 
quickly about the other side that if we're not living by faith, then we think the world has everything to offer, and we, and we actually believe it. And we find ourselves destroyed by the pleasures of sin. Those things that really did look good, and they are good in, 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 the, in, the, in Satan's offering. There, there is pleasure there, and yet they lead to destruction. Because we're, we, we've missed what matters by faith. So, so let's stay on the positive. Faith will guide us. Is faith causing us to see what really matters? Are we living by faith and choosing God over the world? Guided by faith, faith leads us to put God first. Moses chose God, chose Jesus by faith. Hiding by faith. Moses' parents did what was right because they had faith. God's plan and God's power. Moses did what was right, chose the esteem of esteem the riches of Christ, greater riches than Egypt, and affliction instead of pleasure. Number three, verse 27, fleeing by faith. So we're still with Moses, verse 27, by faith he, so you got to go back to verse 24, Moses, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Interesting verse, verse 27 some believe it relates to Moses leading the children of Israel out. Some believe it's Moses going to Pharaoh saying, let my people go. God's going to take his people out. And Moses, by faith, saying, come on, children of Israel, we're leaving. And they leave, and God takes them out. That took faith. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> that took faith. Moses confronted the most powerful man in the world and leading the people out by faith under the hand, out from under the hand of this tyrant. I'm not going to argue with that. that. Clearly Moses had to trust God to lead the people out. But verse 28, by, through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And then verse 29, we get to the Red Sea. <clears throat> so I'm not sure that verse 27 is talking about Moses lead, forsaking Egypt with the children of Israel as their leader. We're going to disobey Pharaoh. We're going to leave. By faith. I'm not sure that's the reference. I know it took faith, and that's not the argument. The argument is, what is verse 27 referring to? I believe verse 27 is referring, and other commentators do as well. It goes back and forth, so nobody's right or wrong. We're all going to talk about the same thing eventually. It took faith. I believe the, 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 the situation here is when Moses tries to deliver Israel the first time, kills that Egyptian. Back in Exodus, we're told... Egyptian was picking on one of the Israelites, and Moses said, I'm the deliverer. I'm going to go take care of my people, and he kills that Egyptian. Later, he comes back to two of Israelite people that are arguing amongst each other. He goes, why are you hurting each other? You're your brother. We shouldn't do this. And they looked at him and said, are you going to kill me too like you killed the other guy? So Moses' idea that he thought they understood he would be the deliverer, they, he thought everything was working out, all of a sudden comes crashing down, and he says, uh-oh. And then, Exodus tells us, Pharaoh finds out and wants to kill Moses. I believe verse 27 is that reference where Moses says, I'm out of here. And he flees. Now, here's the trouble. And here's where the commentators say, that, that can't be it. Because in Exodus, the Bible tells us that he was afraid. The Bible tells us in Exodus that Moses was afraid of the king. He fled because he was afraid. <clears throat> Now, verse 27 of Hebrews 11 says he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. How do we make those two work? I'm not trying to make the scripture say something it doesn't say. I'm just, my question is, how do we bring those two together? Can Moses' faith be weak and then grow? Can Moses look at Pharaoh while he thought his brothers, his brethren, the children of Israel would understand that he was going to... Can Moses look at Pharaoh and his brethren and say, wait a minute, this isn't working out the way I thought it was. I'm out of here because things are not right. Can Moses look at that and say, I'm leaving, and then almost immediately say, but I know God's still going to work this out. Can you do that? Let us ask this question, do you do that? <laughs> Well, you know, things are going well, and then all of a sudden the world falls apart around and you. go, oh, no, I'm afraid. Well, and then real quick, because the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, you go, but, but wait, I'm still going to trust God. So I believe verse 27 is a reference to Moses when he tried to deliver Israel the first time in his own way, and it wasn't God's plan. The, care, the Pharaoh's going to kill him, and Moses says, well, what in the world's going on? I thought this, I'm out of here. And then I believe real, very quickly, Moses says, 
you know what? I'm just going to let God take care of this, and I'm going to trust God. Moses, and here's what I wrote in my notes. He could have returned to Egypt and apologized and tried to, if he was really afraid of the king. You guys with me? Pharaoh could have found him wherever he was. He does not return. Number one, I, I wrote that Moses did, 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 didn't keep running and hiding. He didn't quit and return to Egypt. In other words, Moses could have said in fear, I need to get, uh, the guy's going to kill me, I better go back. But he doesn't. And number two, I believe that shows his faith, he, what does it say at the end of verse 27? He endured as seeing him who is invisible. That gets us to the main point. I hope you were already there saying, when's he going to get to the main point? <laughs> verse 27, that's his faith. Moses fled. Yes, he was afraid, but he knows God's still in charge. And then all of a sudden, very quickly, Moses says, you know what? I'm going to do what God's calling me to do. I'm going to let this in God's hands. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to worry if the king finds me and tries to kill me because God's in charge. And number two, 40 years. He watched sheep for his father-in-law waning on the line. Does it take faith to endure? Moses could have quit. As I said, he could have ran back to Egypt and apologized. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't want what God wants. I want what Egypt wants. Right? He could have done that. He could have quit. He could have said, after watching sheep, this isn't what I thought it was all about. I'm done with this. Moses knew that God was taking care of him. And Moses, by faith, endured. Waiting 40 years, waiting for God to do his work. So, so I, you can study yourself, but I believe that's how verse 27 works in Moses' walk of faith. He was afraid when he first left Egypt, but all of a sudden he says, wait a minute, I'm not afraid of the king. I know that God's got a plan. It just didn't work out the way I thought it would. And I'm going to endure and wait on the Lord. And so you know the rest of the story, don't you? God comes to him in a burning bush 40 years later. I'm sending you to deliver my people. And he goes back and 10 plagues later, Moses and the children of Israel are out of Egypt. Let's endure by faith. Let's press on by faith. Does fear come in? So, so that's another part of it for me. I'm glad Moses, well, okay, not really, but I'm glad he feared because that happens to me too. It happens to you. But we can very quickly come to faith and say, okay, God, thank you that you're in charge. I'm not going to fear the king. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to endure. Press on by faith. We won't understand everything, but we can trust God. We can wait on the Lord. That's what Moses does. One last thought here. Twice now we're told that, that Amram and Jochebed and now Moses didn't fear the king. Do you guys understand? Pharaoh was the most powerful man in the world at that time. And twice we're told in these verses that they didn't care. I just like that. I like that. That's what faith does for God's people. It says, I, God's on his throne. Who cares what everyone else is saying? I don't care about the power of the world. I have a mighty God. I serve a mighty God. I like that chorus. Number four, then, as we close, or bring it all together in verse 28, they sacrificed by faith. So verse 28. Through faith, he, Moses, kept the Passover and sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So he's leading the children of Israel. They all do this together. And then the, the, the them is verse 29. They pass through the Red Sea. So we're not going to get to that one. That's going to be for the next study. But lastly, this morning, guided by faith, they obeyed God's instructions and missed God's judgment because they walked by faith. Now listen, this is a great way to end because faith will will keep us from being destroyed by the destroyer when we choose Jesus and, and his work on the cross to save us from our sin. It's a great way to conclude our study this morning in God's word, bringing it together in our singing, because we're going we're gonna to have a young girl admit that she trusted Christ as her Savior to, to save her from the destruction of sin. Verse 28 gives us this picture of faith in Moses leading God's people, Israel, to trust God when he said, take a lamb, kill it, put the blood on the door, and don't go out of that house, and you'll be saved. That's faith. The, the tenth plague that God brought on Egypt, remember we said ten plagues, is referenced in verse 28. The tenth plague was God destroying the firstborn, killing the firstborn of every family who didn't have the blood on the door. God tells his people how to escape his final judgment. He gives them clear instructions. 
And what the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, verse 28, is that they moved by faith and did what God said. They chose to, by faith, obey God and to live. Or they could have ignored God and said, that's not a big deal, and they would have perished. You Think about this. As we close, think about this. They never did this before. They... They didn't take a lamb and kill it and put its blood on the door. They, they may have had their offerings and their sacrifices, maybe. We know the clear instructions are coming later in Exodus through Moses, but, but maybe, maybe they did some sacrifice. But this was, okay, God, Moses leads the people to obey God, verse 28. By faith, through faith, he kept the Passover. The sprinkle, the sprinkle of blood is that putting it on the door. Moses keeps the Passover, leads the people to keep the Passover, and God's judgment doesn't, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. They believed that the only way to be rescued from judgment was by doing what God said. So as we bring it to a conclusion, what if they thought another way was better? Are you guys with me? What if they thought another way? We're we just trying to do something else. We will lock the door. What if they thought that God wouldn't really care in the end? Well, that, I mean, my neighbor can do it, but I'll be all right. I'm close enough to my neighbor. God's not really going to care. It's only by faith that we miss God's judgment. We must accept God's plan of salvation in Jesus. Jesus. The only way. What did Jesus himself say in John 14? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We must see Jesus' sacrifice as the only way to escape God's judgment, and that's by faith. Faith says, I'm going to do what God says. I'm going to, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So faith brought a sacrifice and put the blood on the door, and that's how there was victory. You guys remember the beginning? How are we going to have the same, our faith, and, and victorious and, and, and overcoming? How, how are we learning? Moses said, God told us what to do. Let's do it. And so there's faith that leads to sacrifice. And faith then brought them victory. And they weren't destroyed. Faith is vital in our lives. We've been saying that throughout this study. And that's what makes these verses so wonderful because they're encouraging our faith. We will not make it through this life without faith. We've seen Noah and we've seen others. I mean, this is, this is faith is so vital. Now we see Moses' parents who trusted God, did what was right. I mean, it was very difficult, but they said, God's got a plan, and God's bigger, and I'm trusting him. And so they overcame. Moses, walking by faith and choosing God over the world, really? How big is the world? How much pleasure is there? And yet faith says, I see what's more important. I have the re respect under the recompense of the reward. Moses fled Egypt by faith. I mean, the king's going to kill me. Well, God's got, God has a plan, and I know that God's going to take care of me, and I'm going to endure. Faith, victory, and then Israel keeping the Passover. The very first time they're ever told to do this, and they do it because they believe God, the sacrifice of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? So let's live by faith, helped this morning by Moses and his parents, and let's live by faith as we run our race. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for giving us the wonderful picture of faith in the lives of those who've come before us that we just get to step back and read their story and say, wow. And in some ways, that was neat. That's, that's, it is. It's really interesting. But Lord, thank you as well that it doesn't stay there, that it wasn't just their faith that is what we should be talking about. It's our faith. That looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we grow. And we're able to make decisions that bring victory in our lives. So thank you again for these pictures this morning. Maybe in, in each area that we talked about, there's a work you're doing in a heart that now the faith of trusting you will guide them. And that, that's, what, that's what's going to matter in our lives, Lord, that we're walking by faith. And Jesus is being glorified as we live by faith. So, so Bless the truth into our hearts as we guide, live by faith, and let faith guide our living. In Jesus' name, amen.